think they're happy. They lie and say the things are fine and hide that empty longing that they feel. They never show it. They keep their feelings concealed. Why are the days so lonely? I wonder where, where can our hearts go free? And who will try to chase that no one's seen? There must be somewhere to share your silent dreams. Hot like a leaf in the wind, looking for a friend. Where can you turn? Whisper the words of a prayer, and you find him there. Hands open wide, loving his eyes. Jesus. All the love you're longing for is Jesus, the friend of the wounded heart. He meets you where you are. Oh, oh, oh Jesus, he is your secret stars. All the love you're longing for is Jesus. The friend of the wounded heart. I have a friend, a precious friend. Oh, how he loves me. He says his love will never end. Oh. Life's road. Oh, 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 how he loves me. He carries every heavy load. Oh, how he loves me. How he loves me. Why I only cry? Oh, how he loves me! How he loves me! Oh, how he loves me! How he loves me! Oh, how he loves me! I know not why.
love you're longing for is Jesus, the friend of a wounded heart. He meets you where you are. Oh, Jesus, he is your secret touch. All the love you're longing for, all the love that you need is in Jesus. The friend of a wounded heart. Yes, my Jesus are. will meet you where you are right there. He meets you where you are. He wants to heal your broken heart. Jesus, he meets you where you are. He wants to come into your life right now. Jesus, he meets you where. to the Lord. I just want to say thank you for this moment and for this hour. We appreciate and glorify your holy name for this friends and family day. For Lord, it is our desire to be numbered among the families of God that are together in love, one with another as friends so that together in glory we will live with you eternally. Help us dear Lord God that everything we need to get today you will give unto us in Jesus' name. Break yokes today. Loose bands today. Set free the captives. Make yourself manifest. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. You may have your seat once again. I welcome you to today's service, the Friends and Family Day. And as we have come, I'll be talking on the subject of family, friend, and foe. Three F's. Family, friend, and foe. The Bible tells us in the book of Exodus chapter 4, verses 9 to 12, that two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he faileth, or when he falleth. For he hath not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? And if one prevail against him, two sh shall withstand him. And the threefold cord is not quickly broken. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 24. Proverbs 18, 24. But there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Here we see the scripture telling us, that we have somebody called friend. We have another one called a family member in the human language. A family member with our own understanding. And yet, the Bible say, a real friend, a true friend, a genuine friend will be closer than that family member. That then means that for the fact that you and I were born by the same parents doesn't mean that we are going to be close enough. For the fact that you and I are husband and wife together does not mean that we're going to be friends of one another, except we choose to be. For the fact that we come to the same church does not mean that we are in the same spirit. No, it doesn't work like that. For the fact that we work together in the same place of work does not mean that we are of the same mind. It says, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. I will tell you the difference between a family and a friend in a minute. Of course, we know about four, and I will get to that of four. Let's quickly open to the book of Mark, Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 3, verses uh, 31 to 35. We're going to read the whole thing, but let's uh, get to this uh, few verses first. Uh, Mark, chapter 3, verse 31. There came then his brethren and his mother, family member. And standing without, saying unto him, calling him, and the multitude sat about him, and they said unto him, Behold thy mother and thy brethren, without, without, seek for thee. And he answered them, saying, Who is my mother? Or my brethren? And he looked around about on them which sat about him, and said, Behold my mother and my brethren, 
For whosoever shall do the will of God, the same is my brother and my sister and my mother. And my mother. I pray the Lord will give us understanding in Jesus' name. Let's look into that same mark again. We we'll look at it from verse 3. And then we read, it's going to be a long, long reading. So please get ready. I'm going to read the old number of verses, and then you read the even number of verses so that we can carry everybody along. Uh, Mark chapter 3, I read verse 3. And he entered again into the synagogue, and there was a man there which had a withered hand. Everybody? All right, I think not everybody is there. Can we please open our Bible? Mark chapter 3. Praise the Lord. Mark chapter 3. If you are there, just say amen. amen. All right. So since we are all there now, we are all going to read together. Amen. Amen. And he said unto the man which had the withered hand, stand forth. Verse 4, everybody. And when he had looked round about on them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their heart, he said unto the man, stretch forth thy hand, and he stretched forth his hands, and his hand was restored whole as the other. But Jesus withdrew himself with his disciples to the, uh, to the sea. And a great multitude from Galilee followed him and from Judea. And he spake unto his disciples that a small sheep should wait on him because of the multitude, lest they should throng him. And unclean spirits, when they saw him, fell down before him and cried, saying, Thou art the Son of God. And he went up into a mountain and called unto him whom he would, and they came unto him. And to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils. And James, son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, and he surnamed them Boanerges, which is the sons of thunder. And Judas Iscariot, which also betrayed him, and they went into a an house. And when his friends, mark that, verse 21, and when his friends heard of it, they went out to lay hold on him, for they said he is beside himself. And he called them unto him and said unto them in parable, How can Satan cast out Satan? And if, and if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. Mm -hmm. 
no man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he will first bind a strong man and then he will spoil his house. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. Praise the Lord. We stop there in the 30th verse. There is quite a lot to dig into from the passage of the scripture that we have read. We see here a scenario where Jesus was ministering to people in Capernaum. And then we have three categories of people that came to Jesus. The first category of people were people that came to hear him. They were drawn unto him because of the miracles they have heard of. They were drawn unto him because of the word of life that he had to speak or that he was speaking unto them. And so they came to hear. They came to be blessed. They came to receive from him. And so they sat all around him. But then there was another set of people that also came for the meeting. Understand, in every gathering, there will be people with the right spirit and people with the wrong spirit. Amen? And so, you get prepared every time you are going for any meeting. And it doesn't matter whether in your family, in your church, on your job, wherever, always get ready. There was this other group of people, set of people that were there. They also came to hear him. But not because they wanted to be blessed but to look for excuses against him. To look for things to hold against him. To look for things for which they want to arrest him. The Lord will deliver you in Jesus' name. And then there was another set of people. Three sets. These third set were not the people that came, sat down around to hear the word of God. Sat down around to know the ways of God. Sat down around to follow the leadings and the guidance of the Holy Ghost. No. They were not people that came to actually accuse him. To arrest him. To hinder him. No. These third sets of people were actually members of his own family. And uh, listen to this. They didn't come so close, they stood aloof. They stood far away. They were even farther from him than the scribes and the Pharisees. And they refused to come inside. The Bible says they stood outside. Pay attention here. It's not everyone in your family that wants you to succeed. It's not everyone that you think are your blood relatives that really are seeking your good in life. It's not everyone that comes for your meeting. It's not everyone that comes for your graduation that really, really wants you to succeed. Some of them are actually thinking they were to be in your position. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So, we see here in the 20th verse, the family came to draw him away from the ministry. The family came away, the brothers, the sisters, the mother, the cousins, the nephew, the Bible says his brethren, they came away to disturb the work of God that he was doing. The family members over there came not for miracle, not signs and wonders. The Bible says they said he was by himself. They thought he was insane. 
They thought he was out of his mind. They thought the best they could do is to hinder him from what he was doing. They were going to stop the work of God. I declare to them in the name of the Lord. Nobody will hinder you from doing the will of God in Jesus' name. Listen to this. God created you for a purpose. He said, before I formed thee in the womb, I knew thee. Before you came out of your mother, I have ordained you and called you to be a minister to the people. But then there are people around you. Some of them are your family members. Some of them are in your community. Some of them are extended family. Some of them are your colleagues at work. Some of them are your family members. They don't want you to succeed. I declare they will fail. Joseph had a dream. And Joseph thinking, I have brothers here. I have a sister. Let me share the dream of my life with them. They will support me. They will encourage me. They will back me up. They will lift me up. They will pray me through. He was wrong. The moment they knew that Joseph was going to be better than, than them, the envy began. The jealousy began. The problem began. And then the scheme to destroy his life began. Did they succeed? I said, did they succeed? Turn to your neighbor and say, in the name of Jesus, by the power of God, your enemies will not succeed. Say, by the power of the Lord, in the name of Jesus, oh, raise up your hand and say, in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Lord, my enemies will see me progressing, succeeding, triumphing in Jesus' name. Whether they like it or not. Amen? You will get up. Whether they even say amen or not, you will make it. Have you not seen people while others are rejoicing? You see the way they look at you from the corner of their eye. Amen? Do I, do I tell you ahead of time? Before we leave here today, some people are going to be recognized. Amen? Heaven will recognize some people. But please trust me. There are some of those that you come and shake your hand and say congratulations. Instead of you, say, uh. Heaven will end them out of your life. They didn't want him to succeed. They came in the name of coming to help him. Every satanic help in your life will fail in Jesus' name. They are enemies, but they come like a friend. They meant evil, but they, they come in a nice way. Revenue wolf coming in sheep's clothing. And many a times we don't know these people. Many a times we don't recognize them. Many a times we put our lives in their hands. And before we know it, it's all over. It's not all over for you. When they came, look at what they did. The man of God, the son of God was busy ministering. They didn't come to support. They didn't come to help. They didn't come to give you a happy hand. They stood aloof. They stood without. And then, among the people that were busy listening, <laughs> unfortunately, they got the wrong set of people. They got the enemy. You know, sometimes your, your, your family will be working with your enemy. And the uh, those that were really close to Jesus were those that really wanted to hear. The next set were the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Eh, what does he have to say? They will see. I said they will see. And so, the uh, family member, they were there. So, they needed to get Jesus. They won't be able to get you. I said they won't get you. So, what did they do? They got the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They tapped. Can you help us tell him we want to see him? Can you help us tell him he needs to leave the work of God? Can you help us tell him he needs to stop praying for people? Can you help us? They didn't put it that way, but they put it in a nice way. 
And then the Pharisees and the Sadducees say, I will tell you the, uh, about, about, about some group of people very soon. And then they now got to people that were busy paying attention and listening. They distracted them. Sometimes your family members are the ones distracting the work of God. And then they got those people and uh, by virtue of the culture of the time, family is very important, even today. And so eventually, the message got to Jesus. That your mother and your brethren are where? Outside. They were not inside. <laughs> Hallelujah. They were where now? Outside. Outside of the kingdom. Outside of the will of God. Outside of the plan and the purpose of God for humanity. They were outside. They want to see you come out of the kingdom. Come outside of the kingdom. Come out of the will of God. Come outside of the will of God. Come out of the call and the purpose of God for your life. Come out of the church where God has planted you. Come out. And Jesus, hallelujah. I, lo I, 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 I love his response. He looked at them. He said, who is my mother? And who are my brethren? And he said, these ones that sit around here are my mothers and my brethren. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Jesus, by so saying, made us to know the spiritual business takes priority over any and every earthly business. Anything you do in life that seems to be more important than the work of God is not by the Spirit of God. It's not by the will of God. It's not the purpose of God for your life. So, Jesus is saying, this business I am doing is more important when Chambalat and Tobias in the book of Nehemiah sent for Nehemiah to come see them, Nehemiah said, I am busy with a very serious work. Don't pull me out. Tell somebody, don't pull me out. They will want to delay you, distract you, disturb you, divert you, discourage you, distress you, all the this. And then put you in danger. Nehemiah said, no. I can't leave this work that I'm doing. They will say anything and everything about you. I can't leave this work I'm doing. To cut a long story short, Jesus declined their request. He will decline their request. Jesus told us also from this, making us to know that Spiritual family takes priority over any and every earthly family. Am I talking to somebody here? Spiritual family is much more, yeah, two are better than one, but who is the other person in your life? Two are better than one because if one falls, the other will lift him up. Who is the one you are counting on? Who is the one you are depending on? Is it the one that when you are falling, they take off their hands and then you fall off? Or the ones that are there to support you, to back you up? The Lord will connect you with destiny helpers. I talk very quickly on three things. Number one, the foolishness of ferocious foes. The foolishness of ferocious foes. There are people that are very wicked, they're good in the evil that they do. They do not want anybody to succeed or prosper in life. And they think they can succeed in what they are doing. And the word of the Lord, the Lord is saying they are foolish. God will laugh at them. God will see their shame. In the name of Jesus. But do I tell you this very quickly? There is no man, no woman born of a woman that does not have an enemy. Am I talking to somebody here? So, don't ever think that you are immune to the attack and the ferocious confrontation of these wicked people that doesn't want you to succeed. 
Do I say this? There are pastors that are jealous of pastors. There are children that are jealous of children. That is, they are siblings together, but they are working against one another. There are colleagues at work that are against one another. There are enemies everywhere. But God will deliver you from them. And so, we see from here the reality of enemies. Exodus chapter 23 verse, 32, verse 22 says, But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy to your enemy. Somebody just missed that. He said, I will be an adversary unto your adversary. Who's an adversary? Somebody working against you. Somebody not working for your interests. They're working against your interests. They, as you are moving up, they are pulling you down. As you are moving forward, they are pulling you backward. The Lord will pull them out of your life. It is real. Don't think we're making it up. This is the word of God. As a matter of fact, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 7, it says, when a man's way please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. His enemies. So, the word of God is telling you that, hey, don't be naive. Don't be ignorant. There are enemies out there. When you see this enemy, when you hear from this enemy, when you see what they are doing, what then should be your reaction? Number one, reality of enemies. Number two, reaction to the enemies. Your reaction. What should be your reaction? Luke chapter 6, verses 27 to 30 says, But I say unto you, which hear. <laughs> I hope somebody is hearing today. The Bible says, I say unto you that he hears. It says, Love your enemy. Love your enemy. Love them. Don't hate them back. Do good unto them that hates you. Bless them that curse you and pray for them that despisefully use you. And unto him that smite thee on the one cheek, offer also the other cheek. And him that taketh away thy cloak, forbid not to take away the, uh, uh, thy, thy coat also. Give to every man that asketh of thee, and of him that taketh away thy good, ask them not again. The word of God is saying that. Let me use the common language they use in America today. When you see the enemies, and then the enemies go down, what do you do? You go up. When they go low, you go up. You go high. When they begin to behave like people without common sense, you show them the wisdom of God. When they withhold the benefits of life from you, you give them the resources of life. When they hold back their smile from you, you give them the smile of God on your face. Amen? You know the way they, 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 they laugh in this country? You know the way they laugh? When they want to laugh? How do they laugh? Yeah? Is that the written? Amen. And when you see judgment coming upon them, somebody say judgment. Somebody say judgment. Because judgment will come upon them. When you see judgment coming upon them, the Bible says that is not the time for you to laugh. Your own reaction. That is not for the time for you to say that is good. God catch you. No. Proverbs 24, 17 says, Rejoice not when thy enemy falleth. Because <laughs> if they don't repent, they will fall. And the Bible is saying, Don't rejoice when they fall, and let not thy heart be glad when he stumbleth. So then what do you do? Romans says, When they are hungry, what do you do? Feed them. Give them food. 
give them something to drink when they are thirsty. Number three, that will make you to know that the, the, the wicked people, the enemies, are foolish. They don't understand why they shouldn't position themselves to be an enemy, an obstacle or hindrance in the life of others. Exodus chapter 23, verse 22. The Bible says, these people are ignorant and that I will be an enemy to your enemy. Pay attention here. If you're a real child of God, this is where the foolishness comes in. And somebody is working against you, please do not ever walk against them. Am I communicating here? They may be your family member, they may be your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, your colleague, your church member, or whoever. Don't walk against them. Because by virtue of what they have done, they make themselves the enemy of God. And God makes himself their enemy. Don't you know, the Bible says concerning Abraham that through you, the families of the earth shall be blessed. That's, that's good. But the, the Bible went further to say, whosoever, pay attention here, whosoever blesses you shall be And whosoever that causes you shall be caused. Listen to this. When you are in the will of God, you don't have to be afraid of witches and wizards. Forces and powers of darkness. Because the cause of God is upon them already. So, they are foolish. They will die in their sin if they don't repent. I get to the second point, the fallacy of godless friends. We've seen the foes, the enemies, the antagonists, the adversaries. The word of God makes us to know they're foolish because their end is destruction and perdition. The foes, they are there on your job. They are there in the church. They are there scheming to take your position, your title. There is nothing you do that they are happy about. They always look for an occasion against you, an excuse against you. That will deliver you from them. But then there are people that we refer to as friends, natural friends. But they are godless people. They are not saved. They are not redeemed. They do not know the Lord. Such are the families of Jesus. Such were the families of Jesus. They were family members that thought they loved him. And because they thought they loved him naturally, they didn't understand the things of the Spirit. They didn't understand the move of God. The plan and the purpose of God. The works of the living God. They didn't understand. Because they were walking in the flesh. And not in the spirit. The Lord will cause you to walk in the spirit. In the name of Jesus. The fallacy. What do I mean by the word fallacy? The misconception. They thought they were friends. But in, don't you know the Bible says, a time will come that those that kill you will think they are doing God's work. Are you with me? Wrong conception. Wrong mindsets. I'm talking about the myths, the lies, the error, the delusion or the mistakes of godless friends. Let me share with you one of them. Many years back, when I came into this country newly, I had a family member that lost me so dearly and wanted me to succeed in America. And you will succeed in America. He knew my status, where I was coming from. He knew my accomplishments and everything. 
And he felt, well, even though he's been here before me, that things can still work out. And so, when I said I was going into full-time ministry because I had a call of God. I've been doing the work for so many years. But now, the Lord is saying, leave every other thing and concentrate fully only on the ministry. And I said, yes, sir. And then I told this family member, and he said, no, it cannot be. Because he's a family member that thought he loved me, but not in the Lord. When Jesus told the disciples that he was going to the cross, what did Peter say? Peter said, God forbid, it cannot be. Not by the Spirit of the Lord. They thought they love you. But their love for you is to deprive you of the purpose of God for your life. You get in the Spirit and discern by what voice they are speaking. Yes, they may be family members. Yes, they may say they love you. But will they allow you or help you to accomplish the purpose of God for your life? There is this minister of God that was in Washington area about 10 years ago, 2008. And then he gave a message, actually, to the gates. And he said there are three friends that you have in your life. Three friends. Three set of who you may have in your life that you need to pay attention to. And this is the way he put it. He said, the first set of friends are your confidence. He said, they are people that will love you unconditionally. Whether you are sick or you are, you are well, whether you are rich or you are poor, whether things are going on fine or not, they will remain your friend. They will not be friends like the friends of Job. Am I talking to somebody here? For as long as Job was okay, he had friends. <laughs> there are people in your life today that are there because of what you are doing for them. Once you stop doing what you are doing for them, or the opportunity to do those things are no more there, where will you find them again? They will be gone. They are not your friends. But your friends, real friends, true friends are people that will be loyal. They will be there for you anytime, any day, no matter what. And then they are going to be like your Jonathan. And that man of God said, there never would have been David without Jonathan. You know, I'm talking about the kind of friend that will choose to lay down their life for you. Jonathan knew. That his father was a king. And after his father was going to be himself. But Jonathan said, David, I knew you were going to be king. How many people can do that to you? Jonathan stripped himself of his sword and everything of glory and dignity of royalty that he had. He put them on David. How many people can do that for you? Those are real friends. Those are real friends. Your confidence. When Saul was going to take the life of David, David told, I mean, uh, Jonathan told David, wait, let me go and watch your back for you. If I see this sign, I tell you this. If I see that sign, he helped David to escape for his life. I pray heaven will connect you with the real friend. I pray heaven will connect you with confidence. In the name of Jesus. Most of the people you are calling your friends, they are there to milk you. When your money is gone, when the favor is gone, they will be gone. This next set of friends, according to him, are your constituents. Your constituents. He said, who are your consequence? 
He said they are not for you. These are people that are not for you. They are around you. They work with you, but they are not for you. They are only for what you are for. And for as long as you are for what they are for, they will remain with you. That means once your interest is in line with their interest, they work with you. Once you change your mind from that line or part of life, you stop pursuing that thing that they are pursuing, they cease from being your friend. Let me bring it home a little bit. Politicians. Why do they work together? Because they are working towards a common goal. Am I communicating? Is it because this politician in this party is in love with this other politician in the same party? Is that, is that the reason why they're working together? No. But for the goal of the party, so they can remain together. If you, for instance, switch your party to another party, would they still be working with you? No. Your constituents. Number three, your comrades. Your comrades. I'm saying this so that you don't mistake in people that are not your friends to be your friends. I'm saying this so that you don't just share the dream of your life with people. Because your constituent members, people of your constituency, you share your dream with them, you know what they want to do? They want to get you out of the way and accomplish the dream without you. Amen? Praise the Lord. Not that alone. Your comrades. Your comrades are people, you, you, you must have heard this, the enemy of my enemy is who? Le Let's help ourselves here. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Are there any friends? If that enemy is no longer my enemy, will I still be your friend? No. That, that means the people you consider as comrades are people that are not for you. They are only against what you are against. You hate that brother, and they hate that brother, and then the two of you can work together against that brother. You know what I'm talking about. But if you should reconcile with that brother, and they have not reconciled with the brother, will you still be friends together? Those are people that could be considered as comrades. They are people that when they hear the dream of your life, they will kill the dream. They will kill the dream. And the Lord will help you and deliver you in Jesus' name. Many years back, there is somebody in my family that had issue with another family member. And they won't talk to one another. And uh, there is a brother of mine that was close to one of them. And you know, because of his closeness, then he will not talk with the other person that was at loggerhead with this other person. Am I communicating? And then I got there. And I said, how can things be like this? So, this person that was at loggerhead with the other person wanted me also to not talk with that person. Somebody say amen. And I said, no, the person has not offended me. You have issues together. I have my freedom and liberty to keep talking with the other person. And then this other brother said, no, how can you do that? This is our own person here. I said, no, my job is to reconcile them together. Stop right there. Are there not people in the church that you form your cliques together? If I don't talk with this person, then you cannot talk with the person. If we are friends, my enemy must be your enemy. 
Is that of God? Will that get us to heaven? No. No. If you have the spirit of the living God, your job is to reconcile the warring parties together. You don't add fuel to the fire that is already kindled. You be a peacemaker. Blessed are the peacemaker. So is the word of the Lord. And somebody here will be blessed. I said somebody here will be blessed. So then, seeing the foolishness or the ferocious foes that will die in their foolishness if they don't repent. That will be limited by God if they don't repent. Understand, when Balak wanted Balaam to go and cause Israel, Israel didn't even know. And because of the gain of greed, or greedy of gain, Balaam was going to do it. God stood on his way. Do I say something for you today? In the name of Jesus, by the power of the Lord, everyone coming against you, God will stand on their way. Any cause coming from anywhere, known or unknown cause, we cancel them today in Jesus' name. They're foolish. They don't understand that he that watches over Israel neither sleep nor slumber. They don't understand that the Bible says that if God be for us, who can be against us? They don't understand. That if they don't repent, their life will be terminated before their time. They don't understand. It's because of their foolishness. And then we now see we that think, okay, we have friends, we have friends. Who are your friends? When you go back to the passage we read for the sake of time, the Bible tells us that the family of Jesus, they came. And then he referred to the same people later that they were his friends. They came to take him. They were not real friends. Who are the real friends? I get to the real foundation, the foundation of a godly family. The foundation of a godly family. Every family has a foundation. And there is a unique difference between spiritual family and a natural family. Many people don't understand. They just go to church. Why the relations of earthly center family ends at death? Spiritual family continues to eternity. Most of the people that we call friends are indeed not friends, but opportunists. They are, they are opportunists in your life. They are there with us only when things are going well, and the things turn around, they are gone. A real friend is supposed to be there to help you when you are down. A real friend is supposed to be there for you to provide for you emotionally, Physically, economically, socially. If they're not there for you at such a time, they're not your friend. It doesn't matter how much of story, I love you, I love you, is it's, it's a lie. It's a lie. Amen? The Bible actually says, if, two, if one falls down, the other one will, will, will lift him up. The Bible says that if one is cold because of the other person, they can generate warmth. Pay attention here. There are families that are working against one another. After this meeting, things will change. There are church members that are working against one another. There are choir members that are working against one another. Do I tell you this? Don't tell anybody this one I want to tell you. There are pastors that are working against one another. They are not in the spirit. Of course they are in the spirit. But not the spirit of the Lord. Every human being is under the control of one out of two spirits. Anything you do, everything you do, is by the influence and the manipulation of the spirit. 
Either you are in that under the influence of the spirit of God or the spirit of the devil. Ask your neighbor, which one is controlling you? Don't tell me the answer, though. The Lord will help us. I said the Lord will help us. In the name of Jesus. So, your friends are supposed to be there with you for you all the time. Your real friend will fight to protect you. Will watch your back. Will defend you. Friends don't gossip about friends. Husbands, wives, parents, children, workers in the church. Friends don't gossip about friends. Friends don't stop friends at the back. No. But then, how can you have the right spirit to be a true friend? I told you there are family, friend, and what's the third one? The four. You can be two out of the three. You can be the three. Amen? You can be a friend and a family member. You can also be a family and a four. Amen? The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. When I say family in that sense, I'm talking about earthly family now. Earthly family. Not spiritual family. You cannot be a spiritual family member and be a foe. It's not possible. It's not possible. Jesus said, who is my mother? Who are my brethren? They are the people that hears the word of God. Who are these people that hears the word of God? They are people that give their life to Christ Jesus. They must be converted. Conversion. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. No matter how good you may be, if the spirit of God is not on the inside of you, you will not be able to do it right. Carnality will come in. Selfishness and self-centeredness will come in. And you have been invited here today so you can be a member of that family. The real family, the true family. We have seen the family members of Jesus did not really know Jesus. They didn't know salvation. They lost it. But you today can be a member of the family of God. And when the spirit of the living God possess you, things will change in Jesus' name. So then, there must be the bath mark in your life. The mark of a new bath. Therefore, if any man be in Christ is a new creature, all things are passed away. Behold, all things are becoming. All things are becoming. Number two, there must be a bookmark. A bookmark in your life. You're a man of the book. You're a man of the world. You're a man that follows the word of God. You're a man that takes joy in doing the will of God. The Bible tells us to study to show ourselves approved unto God. Approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. You must be a bad, there must be a bad mark. There must be a bookmark. There must be a knee mark. You must be a man or a woman of prayer. Without me, you can do nothing. And if you can go on your knee, the lower you go on your knee, the higher you stand tall. Somebody here will stand tall. In the name of Jesus. My time is gone. And it's now time for us to pray. Who are you? Understand. I talked about the family. The earthly family. If that is where you belong, you are not in the real family. You must be a member of the family of God. It is when you are a member of the real family of God that you can be a real friend. If you're a natural friend, a time will come, you will stab your friend at the back because you don't have the spirit of God. And I have a cancer for you. If you're a fool, repent today. 
Because there is danger awaiting you. Danger awaiting you. The question is, where will you spend eternity? The Lord is calling you. He's calling me. He's inviting everyone to the life of holiness. The life of righteousness and of purity. There must be a commitment. If you are converted, let there be commitment to God. Without commitment to God, there can be no commitment to your fellow brother, your fellow sister. Let there be consecration as well. Consecration. Let there be compassion in you towards other people. And then make up your mind that for the rest of my life, I will complement the life of others. I will not compete with them. Close your eyes and let us pray. The Lord will help you. The Lord will keep you. The Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus. This is the will of God for you. This is the plan and the purpose of God for you. Where will you spend eternity? Are you one of those that are without of the kingdom? That the members of the family of Jesus? You know about Jesus, but you never accepted him into your life. Are you one of those that are always looking for evil against others? There is nothing good that you approve of in your life. All you do is just looking for excuses, opposition, antagonizing. Now is the accepted time. The Bible says Jesus looked at them with anger. The anger of God is against those that are working against other people. And if you are sick here, spiritually you are sick, the Lord can heal you. The Lord can deliver you. The Lord can set you free in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. If you rise upon your feet, I want to pray with you. All eyes closed. You are going to say to yourself, Lord, in whatever way I have made myself an enemy of anybody, I repent today. And I renounce that spirit. You are going to say, Lord, in any way that I have been hindrance or obstacle on the progress of other people, I renounce it today. I receive Christ into my heart and to my life. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Precious Lord, I bring your people before you. I pray, dear Father, that every spirit controlling anyone, everyone that is not of you, come into bondage now in Jesus' name. I declare and decree that in the name of Jesus, every power of darkness manipulating the life of anyone, making them to walk contrary to your will, plan, and purpose, destroy now in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for as many that, that are taking joy and comfort in mere earthly, natural relationship. Without relationship with God, Dear Father, turn their lives around in Jesus' name. Oh God, I pray for church members, family members, work members, colleagues at work, working against one another. Lord, that after today, things will change in their lives in Jesus' name. And now I pray, oh Lord, for as many that people are working against them, Standing on their way, hindering their progress, hindering their joy, hindering their peace. Dear Father, make ways for them in Jesus' name. Let the enemy never succeed in their life. Let the enemy never rejoice over their life. Oh Lord, oh God, I pray. You say you'll be an enemy to our enemy. Father, we do not pray that they die. Cause them to repent in Jesus' name. Cause them to know you in Jesus' name. 
and Father, Lord, God of heaven, for all our friends and families that are here. Lord, Jesus was there in Capernaum, healing the sick, delivering the oppressed, setting free the captives, and saving souls. Lord, is there anyone here today without salvation? I pray that the saving grace of God will come upon them in Jesus' name. As many that are here today with any kind of sickness or infirmity in their body, in their life, oppression, satanic works going on there, I come as a servant of the Lord. Satan, hear me. Pack your load. Get out now in Jesus' name. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the sick say, I am healed. Receive your healing now in Jesus' name. Every opposition in your life. I cancel now in the name of Jesus. Spirit of failure. I come against you. Get out now in the name of Jesus. I take authority over every spirit of paralysis, spiritual paralysis, material paralysis, bodily paralysis, any kind of paralysis. I reverse you now in Jesus' name. Oh Lord God of heaven, I pray for those whose hearts are wounded. Because of disappointments. Because of the experiences of life. Oh Lord, there is balm in Gilead. Let there be healing virtual from the throne of grace upon their spirit, soul, and body now in Jesus' name. For everyone present here today, open the windows of heaven. Bless them. Father, bless them. Beyond their imaginations, bless them. Keep them by your power. Prosper them on every side. Let there be a mark and a proof of the touch of God upon the life of everyone that came for this program this day in Jesus' name. Stagnant ministries. Stagnated ministers. I speak into your life. Life in Jesus' name. Progress in Jesus' name. Success in Jesus' name. You go from here and succeed. You go from here and be a blessing to your generation. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name I pray. Sins and griefs to 